Hi everyone. This video from Count Backwards from 10 is going to be a little bit different. Instead of talking about a specific topic in anesthesia or critical care, I'm going to put out in this video an explanation as to why I went into anesthesia as a roadmap for anybody else in medical school considering anesthesia as a career, any nurses considering pursuing nurse anesthetist, or any PAs considering nurse anesthesia assistant, and any college students who are thinking about going to medicine and pursuing anesthesia. I also want to put it out there that we don't just put people to sleep, sit back, and read the newspaper. And most importantly, I think, is I want to outline what makes anesthesia so special to me in the 21st century, because I do believe it to be an extremely unique practice in medicine. In case you don't want to hear all of my commentary, everything is already laid out here on this page, just feel free to read through it, but I do highly recommend just listening for a couple of minutes, as I'm going to make some points and elaborate on some things that may not be as a parent from what I've just written. Now I'll start by saying scrubs every day, minimal note writing, minimal rounding, and minimal clinic. What more is there? That's pretty much the entire video. Obviously I'm just kidding, but pretty much off the bat sold it for me. But in all seriousness, everything I say here is solely my, op my opinion and mine alone. That being said, anesthesia is unbelievably special field of medicine because as far as I can tell, it's the last field of medicine that can be practiced in a pure form by the practitioner. What I mean by this is that there's no one between me and the patient. There's no pharmacist there to check my orders and make sure that there's no contraindication or bad interaction between two medications. I don't have to put any orders into the computer that then have to be checked. There's no nurse to place my IVs or ensure that I'm delivering the proper dose of the proper medication. There's no phlebotomist to draw my labs. There's no respiratory technician to do my arterial sticks. There's no cardiologist, if I'm doing open heart, to do my echo. There's no pulmonologist to do my bronchoscopies while I'm in the operating room. The anesthesiologist is the proverbial judge, jury, and executioner. We do all parts of a patient's medical treatment short of the surgery itself while we're in the operating room. What's more is that much of medicine has a very prescribed methodology, methodology by which we perform it today based off of best practices and the most up-to-date information, meaning that there are usually some type of set algorithms for certain pathologies. And anesthesia, each provider has their own recipe, their own twist on the way they do things for procedures, from a mechanical standpoint, their preferred cocktails per se of medications they want to use for their cases and it allows those practitioners to make their practice special and appropriate to them. As they say there's 20 different ways to skin a cat and anesthesia is a great example of that. So just like myself anybody who enjoys procedures anesthesia is loaded with them from simply placing IVs to central lines and arterial lines, epidurals and spinals, various regional blocks, pain procedures and injections, percutaneous tracheostomy tubes and chest tubes in the ICU, the list goes on. What's more is that these things don't usually take more than 10, 15, 20 minutes at most, and you get the satisfaction of doing your procedure and then moving on to the next thing, be it another case, another procedure, another patient while you're rounding in the ICU or in your own pain clinic. Now I will say something that's very unique about this practice is that you have about five to 10 minutes before bringing a patient into the operating room to have them trust you enough to take care of them when they're at their most vulnerable. What I mean by this is that a complete stranger has agreed to allow you to bring them into an OR, put them to sleep and paralyze them, put a breathing tube in them, connect them to a ventilator and keep them alive while someone, someone else does something extremely invasive to them. I don't know if any of you uh, trust your parents or your friends to even hold your cell phone while you go to the bathroom, let alone have someone's, your life literally in someone else's hands, especially somebody you don't know. As an anesthesia provider, you're tasked with a unique situation in which you have to make that person in front of you trust you with their life in just a couple of minutes. Now, there are definitely some other things to take into consideration um, that people may perceive as negative, but it's all about perspective. For one, patients are not really our own. Anesthesia is really a, almost a consult service. In the operating room, 
uh, were consulted to provide various types of anesthesia so that patients can undergo procedures and surgeries by the primary provider, be it the cardiologist, GI doctor, the surgeon. And this means that the patients really belong to that provider. Now, obviously, there are certain cases. Um, anyone who has their own pain practice may have their own long-term patients or physicians who are practicing in an ICU, a closed unit, where those patients are admitted to them. Uh, but on the whole, anesthesia is a consult service. Now, the other thing is that our specialty is one where we kind of have to put our egos aside and recognize that we're not going to be the person that the patient is praising at the end of the day or even necessarily remembering. In fact, if a patient doesn't remember you, it means you probably did an excellent job administering anesthesia. But really, because we don't build these long-term lasting relationships with our patients, you're not going to be the doctor or the nurse practitioner or the nurse, uh, anesthesia assistant that the patient fondly remembers back to. It's always going to be Dr. So-and-so did this brain surgery on me or Dr. So-and-so uh, ablated my AFib, but it's never going to be Dr. So-and-so gave me the best anesthesia of my life. And again, this is all anecdotal and you know probably a gross overspeech, but you're never or most of the times not going to be the focus of patients' treatments plans. Uh, the most closest thing I've heard is that uh, my anesthesiologist, they were the best person ever when I was having my baby. He gave me an epidural and all the pain went away. And you ask them what their name was and, you know, they don't remember. He was just some tall guy or some short girl or something else. And again, this is obviously speaking in gross generalizations, but it tends to be the reality because we don't form these long lasting relationships with our patients. At the end of the day, I do not believe there to be any other specialty in which the practitioner effectively plays all medical roles to the patient at the same time, you know, obviously short of performing the surgery or procedure. And in a day and age where much of medicine is hyper-specialized and at times very algorithmic based on standards of care, anesthesia remains almost the last frontier to practice medicine in, in its purest form, where you're really putting your hands on a patient and doing something that isn't a surgical specialty. So that's all from this video on count backwards from 10. Um, this is why I think anesthesia is special. It's why I think you should pursue it if it's something you're considering. Um, and it's definitely why it's so special to me and why I went into it. And I really enjoy the aspect of being able to be an intensivist one day and kind of split my time between the operating room and the ICU to kind of mix it up. And obviously, I don't have to go to clinic. So. Hit the subscribe button down below. Follow us on Instagram, account backwards from 10. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out and stay tuned for the next video.